You're not going to believe this until I show you the proof, but the situation with Brandon, the guy who spent $62,000 on Ruby Rose's OnlyFans, actually gets so much worse and more sad and honestly just downright scary for Ruby Rose. I imagine she's considering getting like a really strong team of bodyguards, like trying to hire the fucking Justice League to protect her because Brandon is unhinged now. And in the last video I made about this, he had met her in person and Ruby Rose chalked it up to being like, oh, what a coincidence, I bumped into my number one spender on OnlyFans. Meanwhile, I'm quite sure Brandon cold calculated, tracked her down in order to just spontaneously run into her. So he's already showcased that he will find her in the real world if given the opportunity, I believe. And after what Ruby Rose posted today, if that happens again... I feel like there's no telling what he might do in the the mental state that he appears to be in. It's fucking frightening. Let, let's just get into it. So Ruby Rose dropped this banger on Twitter today. Tat my face on you so I know it's real. And it's a video of text messages between Brandon and her. And that's really not an accurate description because she does not engage in these text messages. It's just Brandon talking at her endlessly. And then another video of the tattoo Brandon got of Ruby Rose's face on his body. Now let's take a peek at the sacred texts here. Let's look at the documents. So right away, Brandon's name is saved in her phone as Brandon Weird OnlyFans Fan. And I think that is just beautiful. Dude has dumped $62,000 in a month on Ruby Rose's OnlyFans content, only to be known by his queen as the Weird OnlyFans guy. I think that is such a powerful lesson many people need to learn. And it's one that extends beyond OnlyFans. This extends to like streaming too. There are a lot of people that believe if they're donating money to someone, they're entitled to some kind of relationship with the recipient of their cash. Whether it's friendship or in this case, fucking marriage, lifelong soulmates, that's just not the reality of the situation. Now let's start reading the texts, and it's important to keep in mind that all of these happen over the course of about 48 hours. So really let that marinate in your noodle up there, because it is crazy how deranged this gets. So he starts by saying, what are you doing tonight? And then when he doesn't get a response in a timely enough fashion, he then comes around the next day saying, why aren't you answering me? I thought we had a genuine connection. And then the legendary quadruple text, Ruby, why aren't you answering me? I have invested so much money into our relationship. Pause. So Brandon believes he can purchase a relationship like it's a microtransaction in an EA video game. Brandon dumping his piggy bank while squeezing his hog to Ruby Rose did not buy a relationship with her. And it didn't mean that she was destined or obligated to fall in love with him. Which is a concept that Brandon just can't seem to grasp. The only thing he's able to grasp is his cock while watching his OnlyFans princess. This is some frightening delusion here. I imagine Ruby Rose was already a bit concerned when Brandon dumped 62 grand on her in a month. That seems like obsessive behavior, and nobody wants to be the center of an obsession. It's a horrible feeling, and frankly, it's downright dangerous. That's creepy shit. Which is why she labeled him the weird OnlyFans guy, I imagine. And now it seems she reluctantly gave him her number and he is going crazy with it, and further solidifying that he is an unhinged creep. He continues, I am in love with you. Why won't you love me? Jesus Christ, brother. And then he goes into like the longest speech I've ever read. I think he got this directly from the transcript of an anime. I would do anything for you. I would fly anywhere to be with you. All that I can ever think of is you. There is not a single other person in the world as perfect as you are. You could be my queen and I'd be your king. I would give you anything you could ever wish for. We can even have a one-sided, open-ended relationship where you can do whatever you want as long as I know that at the end of the day, you come home to me and are only with me. I promise. I will treat you- <clears throat> I will treat you better than anyone, Ruby. I love you with all of my heart. I've never felt this way about anyone. I want to marry you. I want to have a family with you. I want to only be with you. I would quit everything and give up everything just to, just for you. I will do anything for you to love me. I will give you everything I have just for the chance that you never leave me. I want you to be with me forever. In my eyes, I've never seen or known something that I'm so sure will be perfect. 
I can imagine waking up every day and looking over at you asleep on the bed looking perfect while you sleep and I run my hands through your hair or am I getting you the largest diamond ring that I can find so that, it's on, so that it's on the hand of a true queen? I will buy you whatever car, boat, or jet you want. I will never love someone as much as I love you, Ruby. I love you more than Bitcoin. I only love you. <laughs> I love you more than Bitcoin. Shit, he just won over my heart with that one. Wow, he more than Bitcoin? Really, Brandon? What the fuck? That's a lot. That's a lot of love. I will give up everything to have you to only be mine. Please don't ignore me, Ruby. I am sending you more money right now. You are making me cry right now by not answering me. I am bawling at the thought, thinking that you won't be with me forever, and that you don't love me anymore. I don't know if there is a point anymore to anything. What the fuck do you mean, you don't love me anymore? She never loved you in the first place. You have only ever creeped her out, clearly. All I can ever think of or dream of is you. You are on my mind all day every day, thinking of how you smelled in the hotel lobby when I first saw you, thinking of your perfect voice, thinking of your perfect smile when you first laughed awkwardly as I told you that I was your number one fan. Everything about you makes me get butterflies in my stomach. Oh, it's making my fucking skin crawl reading this. This is, like, the most alarming text message I think I've ever fucking read. Without it just being, like, an overt threat, this is, like, the closest thing I've seen to just downright declaration of cringe, like, frightening obsession. Like, good God. So, it seems like Ruby Rose reluctantly gave Brandon her number when he somehow just magically bumped into her the other day. And this is a... This is how things are going. Clearly, these feelings aren't reciprocated because Ruby doesn't even know him. And he doesn't know her. He has an unhealthy obsession with her. And he's imagined this fantasy world of them getting married and all he can think about is her. The obsession is very scary. As I mentioned in the last video, Brandon is a porn addict. He was on an entire TV show dedicated to his porn addiction. And it's clear he is still addicted to porn. And now... He is obsessed with her. He actually has a mental illness that needs professional help, clearly. And this is just terrifying. Please tell me you're just very busy and not seeing my texts right now, princess. Please? I cherished every second I was with you. I adore you. You are the reason I wake up every morning. I have no purpose without you. You are my rock. Ruby? Ruby, stop ignoring me! Why are you ignoring me after all the money that I've given you to show you that I'm only loyal to you and how much I love and appreciate and adore you? How dare you not answer me? I see you actively posting on your Instagram story and you have not answered me once. You are making me very mad. I have treated you like a princess and you won't even take the time to respond to me. I will not tolerate this. So he's going full mask off here into his Batman supervillain origin story. And I can already just see him slamming his fist into his desk at the last part of that message. I will not tolerate this any longer. Notice how all of this is taking place over the course of hours. Like a handful of hours. It's all one day to lead to this. Spiraling into the deepest pits of hell with this fury that not even Lucifer could conjure. All because the OnlyFans model that he sends so much money to isn't in love with him and responding to his text messages. His very creepy text messages, mind you. It's not like he's just trying to have normal conversations. He's immediately opening with like, I love you. We need to get married. You are actually all I think about, all I dream about. You are literally my purpose. You are my fucking rock. I know I'm a stranger to you, but you are actually the only angel in my life. The, you are the sun that shines for me. And I'm looking at the sun and it's not burning my eyes. It's opening them. Luckily, Jekyll comes back out and he puts Mr. Hyde away and, you know, he's very apologetic for his outburst. It was highly unprofessional and, and it, ridiculous, actually. Which, again, this is not uncharacteristic of someone with an obsession. These violent mood swings and all of this anger, obsessions are a horrible thing. And this is clearly an obsession. So, he says, I am sorry for getting mad at you. I did not mean to. I shouldn't have, but the love I have for you causes me to get very emotional, especially about you. I love you so much, Ruby. You're my world, my rock, my queen, my everything. There's nothing that I wouldn't do to make you the happiest little princess in the world. I promise that I love you, and only you, for you. Wait, I promise that I love you, and only you, for you. It's like a fucking riddle. What, what is that? That's like some kind of gotcha moment that Gollum would have used on Frodo Baggins. I, 
I don't understand. But anyway, I, I don't care about your followers, your fans, your money. I only want you. You. Oh, oh, wait, I get it. He's saying, I only love you for you, as in, like, her personality. Like, I don't care about any of the other stuff. I love you for you, babe. Oh, my goodness, that's so sweet. Oh, and they say chivalry's dead. Wow. What a heart melter. You're the best thing that ever has happened to me. I know that we only met for five minutes and that you had to leave, but I have cherished it so much I cannot stop thinking about it and you. You were magnificent. It was almost like it was out of a movie when I first saw you come down the elevator with your perfect smooth hair, your perfect clear skin, your beautiful smile and eyes. I would never change a thing about you. I only want you forever, my queen. You'll be the only thing and all that I need to be happy. You become my sole purpose in life. Baby. It's so over the top that it almost seems satirical. Like it's supposed to be a parody of an obsessed stalker for an OnlyFans model. But I really think this is genuine. Not only because he gets a tattoo, and I'm pretty sure it's a real tattoo, but also just knowing Brandon's history, where he is legitimately a porn addict, and even had a whole like show episode dedicated to it. So I really do think this is all genuine here, and that is very alarming. But for just a moment, let's go ahead and play with the idea that this is all fake. What would be the purpose? I suppose if this is all like a coordinated effort between Ruby Rose and Brandon, it could be used to try and drive traffic to Ruby Rose's OnlyFans, perhaps? But I still think that's a bit unrealistic, because I don't think anyone would ever agree to play this role, and I don't necessarily see this leading to a lot of new OnlyFans signups, because if anything, it highlights the, like, danger of it to a certain extent. So I don't think it'd be a successful marketing campaign if this is all fake and that's the purpose. Please, answer me, my queen. Please don't leave me. I adore you, Ruby. You are all I need to be whole in life. I will never leave you or even look in the same direction of another girl. I want to marry you. And then he sends a, another 30000 I even spent 30000 more on you since we met because I thought we had something genuine and real. Like, it's so crazy. What do you mean? If it's genuine and real, you wouldn't have spent $92,000 on it. It, 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 it would have been free. It would have been a real, genuine experience, not like a fucking transactional one. And you didn't even get an experience... You met her for fucking five minutes when you bumped into her, which, again, I know you schemed and planned for that. You absolutely, like, I'm imagining him on, like, stakeouts and shit, like, in an unmarked vehicle, kind of following her around, like, getting her schedule and then, like, waiting for the right moment to bump into her. I will empty my bank account just to be with you. I will travel across the country just to randomly run into you again. I will never be over you. You are the love of my life. My perfect little princess, you are stunning. You are my breath of fresh air in a world that is so dark and cold. You are the sun to my thunderstorm, the spurt of luck in my day, the pot of lucky gold at the end of the rainbow. You are my everything in this life. That has to be the worst written line in the history of humanity. That is the worst romance line that has ever been fucking put to paper. Well, put to text. That's worse than Fifty Shades of Grey writing with the sodden panties and the, uh, I don't make love, I fuck hard. That, what he just said there, that whole sentence is nauseating. And I wish nothing more than to spend the rest of my life with you. I can spend all of my money and be homeless just to wake up every day knowing that you are happy. I can watch you have sexual actions with other men just to pleasure your sexual needs. I can be your sissy boy and let you boss me around while I do whatever you demand of me in my sissy maid outfit. I will do anything at any cost just to make you happy and just to be in the same room that you're breathing in. I have an obsession with you since the day I first saw you on Instagram. Ever since that day, I have made it my life mission to one day have the chance to see you. I'm going to skip a couple of chapters here, like six paragraphs worth of more, like, fucking vomit from his mouth, and go to this. I will send you 10 Bitcoin right now if you answer me. That's worth almost 400 grand. All you have to do is respond to me with one word, Ruby. Please, I need your attention. I need to make sure that my kitten is safe. <laughs> He's actually trying to bribe her again, like, look, 400 grand for you to say anything to me. And actually, doesn't even need to say anything. He goes down and says, all you have to do is just react to one of my messages. Please, I beg you, I cannot think of life without you. So all she has to do for 400 grand is just react to one of them. It could be like the laughing crying emoji or something, like how cringe all of it is. And he would then give her 400 grand. Holy shit. That is so fucking pathetic. Now I'm skipping around again here, but then he sends her pictures that he's in a tattoo parlor saying he has a surprise for her, and then sends pictures of the tattoo being done and then the finished work as well. That to me does seem like a real tattoo. 
I don't think that's one of the fake temporary ones, but it's kind of hard to confirm beyond a shadow of a doubt, like 100% it's real. Like in the pictures, like it seems like there's not a lot of redness there, which every tattoo I've ever had had quite a bit of redness around there and like some blood still oozing out. In the pictures, I can't really see that, but it's also possible that it just been wiped away. And in the videos showing the process, it does seem like he's actually getting a real tattoo. So I'm leaning more on the side of this all being true and not just like fake or some kind of scam or anything. And that's scary. Like this whole situation is fucking frightening to see the inner workings of an obsession. And his behavior isn't even unusual for obsessed people. Like this is why it's so dangerous. These fucking violent mood swings, this outrage, this... It's just, it's a terrible situation. It's a legitimate mental illness. It's really sad. It's actually sad, and he needs to get professional help for it. He has a porn addiction, and has had a porn addiction since at least 2009, and now an obsession with Ruby Rose and her OnlyFans content. This is an individual who needs legitimate professional help, and Ruby Rose needs to actually make sure that she is as far away from this guy as possible. Like, she's going to probably need security to ensure that Brandon doesn't get anywhere near the premises that she's around. Because this guy does not seem to be in his right mind. So, just wanted to give you an update to this story because it's a fucking wild one. That's about it. See ya.